to the SP-1200, the blue light bulb, to the board, the engineer's hands, and the limited world of patience. Hallelujah to everybody say ho, amen to all the ladies say ow. Thank God for make money, money, make money, money, and bless every hand that was ever put in the air in your name. Yo, what's going on, um, B-Boy Toys, uh, here for another session on footwork and freezes uh, before we move on to more difficult things, but um, yeah, so the past few weeks we've been going over a lot of, uh, uh, last week we went, we went over shuffles, we went over leg sweeps uh variations on sweeps sweeps on both directions on both sides um and then comboing it all together with leg shuffles knee shuffles uh leg sweeps and um so what we're gonna do today is uh, we're gonna go over, over go over some really basic threads so we'll start with some things that are, are pretty common, and then we're gonna go over some threads that are not so common. And then ultimately being an East Coast cat from Maryland, we're gonna show a little bit of that, a little bit of that old bay flavor, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna show some Maryland style threads and DC style threads that uh, we kind of do that isn't isn't so common other in other places. Um, I know that me and my crew use these threading styles and techniques a lot just because we're, you know, based in the DMV. Uh, so we're going to go over some common ones, uncommon threads, and then um, some very regional specific threads that you won't really see elsewhere. I mean, by now you might see it elsewhere, but that being said, uh, we're, we're going to go over some threads that were fairly iconic and pretty common in the DMV area, and also just other general footwork movements. So, uh, as always, before we get into anything else, we're going to do some stretches. It's going to be the same old stretches every time. Uh, so, we're starting off with split I'm already in a split position so to start things off with uh like yeah, which direction always all right so we're gonna start off with a split and same thing as always just knees straight toes up uh you don't necessarily have to flex them just you know try to basically keep your uh, back straight knees straight on the ground and actually stretching your thighs and along the uh the inner muscles of your uh, of your legs so from here we're just going to stretch going to go all the way down if we can i know it may seem redundant but it, it, it's pretty pretty crucial to stretch as always um, if some of you guys want to stretch ahead of time, that's great, but, you know, for the sake of people joining in late or just not knowing any better, and it's like the first online class that they're viewing, I'm always going to start with a stretch, so it's what it is. thought I'd just address that real quick, so, um, we're just going to do... A deep stretch today just because uh, I always rush it and I only do like 30 seconds of each position but today we're, we're gonna do a pretty deep stretch and make sure we get it in fully uh, some of these threads will be uh, will require some flexibility okay so just a little bit longer just 
push yourself to go down further and make the stretch a little bit deeper if you can. Keep your back straight. And if any of you guys are wondering, do I get like this? Does this look similar or is it similar to yoga? Yes, yoga is very important. Uh, if you don't do yoga, I would highly recommend it. Unless you're like five years old and whatever. All right, so from here, opposite arms, opposite hands. So left hand going to my right foot. We're going to stay here for about a minute. Always make sure you go as far as you can, and again, even for things like this, keep your back straight. You just simply reach. Don't try to pull any other body parts. Just try to have your body naturally stretch while reaching for the other position. So switch sides. So right arm to your left foot now. So from here, oops, do a little counter stretch. From here, we're going to do butterfly stretches. All right. Pull the zip hands down. All right, so feet together, legs in a diamond shape, back straight, and lower your body to, or maybe high positions, yeah, and lower your body to your feet as much as possible. to back split stretches, although it's not like a true split, but uh, my left leg is back, right leg forward. Okay. And if you can make it deeper by going forward and doing like, you know, straight front to back, that's great, but uh, I can't do that anymore, so I'm going to do this cheat a little exact jump. And then same thing if you can, opposite hand, opposite feet, reach for your toe. right now, right foot, or right leg back, okay, same thing, right hand to left foot, opposite hands and feet, and if you can make it deeper and actually go into the split, go for it.
itself. Oh. Straight leg stretch. All right. Legs together, feet together, back straight, and try to reach very close as best as you can. Uh, if you want to do the standing up, that's fine too. Just whatever, whichever is more comfortable for you guys. to a squat position. If you can balance yourself, that's great. Otherwise, um, do it as best as you can. And you want to basically do a W freeze. Split your feet apart. And basically do a W freeze. This is going to be our last stretch. Bring your hips up if you can. Okay. Just to stretch out the front of your thighs and around your knees. Go over some of the basic threads, and the most common one of all is like your your regular threads with your legs while laying on the floor, uh, on on your side or sitting on your butt, whatever. So first things first, just sit down, and what you're gonna do is uh, we'll always, as always, uh, we'll we'll start with the right leg. So right leg. Just lay it against the ground, have the other leg on top. Right, so my right foot is down, my left leg is out, and left hand grabs your right foot. Okay, and so when your left hand grabs your right foot, hold on to it, and what you want to do is thread, just like you're sewing a needle. From here, this opening, you want to pull this foot through here, and you can go to a figure four and do a frame. Okay? So, another good angle from here, again. From here, you can lay on the floor or sit up. But basically, I like to sit a little bit lower to the ground. But from here, Try to hold on to your foot the whole time. If it comes apart, you know, it is what it is. Everyone's got different flexibility, but try your best to hold on to that foot the whole time. You can hold it, you know, on the bottom of the foot or just like on the tip of the toes, like this if you want. It's up to you, whatever's comfortable. I find over the toes, like this is best for me. And basically from here, just thread and then lock into a floor freeze. Super basic thread. So from here, it's just going to be that. Okay. Same thing for the other side. Left leg underneath your right. Okay. Left underneath your right leg. Right hand on your left foot. And just go through this opening that you made this hole that you make with your hands and your feet. It's the most basic thread you can do. Okay, just going in and out like this. Same thing for the other side. Okay, it's the most basic thread. Everyone can do this, okay? So, 
one one fun way to go into that thread is through doing uh, like a floor uh, floor work when you're sliding on your stomach or spinning on it or when you're doing like a stomach roll or these that that's what I call it out of everyone has a different name for this move but the most basic thing I can think of is when you come around from a six set right very common combination uh, but it looks really dope either way no matter no matter how long you've been dancing if you get this combo it just always looks dope so from here six set right and then from here sliding to your stomach boom floor breeze here thread here kick okay so from here it's So we'll go, we'll go over that combo a few times. So a stomach roll is basically from here, you're laying down in a split like we were stretching earlier, and then our body's kind of sideways, right? You roll onto your stomach, and you rotate on your tummy all the way to the other side, and then you go on a split the other way. Okay, and then from here, you just cross your legs naturally. However, they're apart, you just fold over from that position. So from a figure four on my right side, they just come apart, split, swing, swing whichever leg is in front of you to help you quickly rotate to the other side. And then fold into a figure four. Okay. So reminiscent of like a Superman. Uh, if you if you know how to do Superman's, like this will come real quickly. If you don't, this will help you understand Superman really easily later on down the road when you learn more power moves. So from here, split, swing, fold. Okay. And then if you really develop a lot of momentum from doing footwork, like you have a lot of it, you can definitely rotate a whole lot more in your tummy as much as you want to make it look as dynamic as possible. So from here, you can easily go from here and just, you know, the more momentum and energy you build into it, the more you can rotate and the, the crazier it looks. Okay. So from here, you can thread, thread back, thread, thread back. I'm going straight into the figure four, if you want. See what I'm saying? And then from here, thread, you do a sharp kick. Okay. Um, this is my left foot, my left leg. And then from a sharp kick, anchor your weight onto your right toe. And come around to get into uh, either continuing footwork counterclockwise or uh, clockwise, it's up to you. So, uh, I like to do my footwork, or generally just, in, you know, by default, I do my footwork counterclockwise. So, remember what I said, counterclockwise. Uh, this, this camera angle might reflect my position. 
so don't get that. Just don't let what you see get twisted. Just always listen to my words and, and, and double check what you're doing as well for yourself. Anyways, going counterclockwise, you can do six step, right? And then from here is when you flip into your uh, stomach roll and glide into uh, glide on your stomach into uh, my thread. So from here, my right leg is going to swing across as I lay across the ground. So from here, right, I'm swinging across. Boom. <coughs> Like that. Okay. And then from here, I can continue doing full work counterclockwise. There's a, lot, there's a lot of different ways you can get to go in and out. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can play with this angle. Okay. So, one more time, and then we're just going to uh, move on to some other thread ideas and concepts for you to play around with. Okay. None of this is 100% rock solid, by the way. It's just purely conceptualist. It's for you to play around with combinations and flow for you to develop your footwork better. Um, it's not the only way to do thread. I mean, there's a gajillion way to do it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you can always do, from here, you can do a hook, a leg sweep, and from the leg sweep, Go into a thread there or reverse thread, hook behind your foot, leg sweep, and go back in the opposite direction if you wanted to. There's a lot of different ways you can play with those really basic uh, uh, threads. So, one more time, real quick. I'll do the uh, legs, not legs, the, uh, the stomach roll. To the thread and kick, and then uh, we're, we're going to move on. So from here, going counterclockwise, and you go clockwise, this is the exact opposite of what I say. So from here, six step. From here, slip down to your tummy, floor freeze, kick. Twist around, hook, step. Okay, and then you can continue, continue doing your six step uh, in the same direction that you started. All right. Um, so that's your basic idea of a thread. It's just hand, feet, feet going through the opening. Okay. Super basic thread. Uh, the next step up from that is just creating any opening with your body and using any part of your body, any other part of your body to thread through that opening. So if you can think of this as the most basic way to start, Okay. Uh, you can do conjoin your limbs. You know, use different parts of your body to create an opening. You know, or here, this whole opening, right? And just think of ways you can thread the other parts of your body through these openings. Uh, it can be, you know, preferably if you can keep it perfectly intact and you can go whole thread through, that's great. Otherwise, uh, you know, it can be imperfect as long as it just still flows with the rest of your movement. And as long as it makes sense, as long as one thread, whether perfect or imperfect, leads to another thread or move. That's all that matters. So 
for example, uh, one thing you can do is, as opposed to a basic grip, instead of grabbing your foot, go the next joint up and use your knees. So from your knee, you can use your leg to thread it through this area. And I'm like cheating a little bit by moving my hands around, but it doesn't matter. As long as you're doing, keeping the idea together as best as you can. Okay? So you can do things like you go around in six and boom. Uh, you know, you come up with little freeze ideas. Boom. And then from here, you pull on this hand and you move the thread over to your other foot now. Or your other knee, my bad. Okay, so for example, start on this knee. I thread, pull on it with my foot, and then now my hand is anchored on my right knee instead of my left. And then, if you wanted to, now you can take your hand thread through, pull on that hand, and now it's an anchor to your right elbow. So you went from your left knee, right knee, to your elbow. So you can go, you can do things like thread, boom, you know what I'm saying? Thread, boom. So there, there's a lot of ways to trick people visually as to what you're doing and what you're threading and not threading uh, in order to create visually a steady flow, uh, you know, step by step, a steady flow of movement that looks very fluid as opposed to being more choppy or traditional step based. You can you can definitely do things more fluid. So you can do thread and go back, but then hook behind the knee. Boom. Right? And then from here, let go of the foot and you can keep your hand on your knee and start threading different ways. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's just a bunch of different ways you can start playing around with some of these movements. Um, so we'll, we'll go over the, the traveling hand thread uh, again real quick. So from here, uh, well, actually, we'll just start from a squat. Left hand on your left knee. Right? So, left hand, left foot. Okay, left hand on your left knee. Right leg threads through. Pulls on your right hand. Right hand is now on your right knee. I mean, no, left hand is on your right knee. Okay. So, one more time, I'm, I'm mixing up my left and right words. So, left hand, left knee, right leg threads through, pulls, left hand is now on my right knee, okay? Now from here, my right arm threads through, pulls. And my left hand is now on my right elbow. Okay, so doing it quickly, it looks a lot cooler. So you can always do, you know, boom, boom. You know. So if you do it quick, it, it makes a little bit more sense. It, it flows a little bit better. And people see what you're doing 
Um, it's almost like a puzzle piece. You're like switching your hand from one joint to the other. And it's not necessarily breaking up flow. It's just kind of continuing on the idea or the concept. And then you can switch it up to another different flow or move or complete the other idea altogether. So one more time. So for example, if you're doing six step, right? From, a, from this position, you can go straight to a squat, thread, pull, thread, pull. Okay? So from here, you're doing six step. Switch, thread, pull, thread, pull. Okay. So your hand goes from here. Right, leg goes through, pull, and then from here, your hand goes through, threads, and you pull. So it's just kind of like, you know what I'm saying, constantly uh, weaving in a sense, like you would a needle in a thread, you know what I'm saying? So, a lot of different ways you can play around with this whole idea. Um, something very specifically unique to uh, to the DMV area, to DC, Maryland. Uh, well, actually, the, yeah, the whole Virginia too. The whole the whole DMV is uh, a lot of it is threading with your upper body and your arms. So, um, a good way to think of threading with your arms or your upper body is, you know, like I mentioned earlier, it's just simply coming up with creating an opening using your uh, limbs and then using any of your other limbs or just body parts that can be your head or your whole body even and uh, looping through that hole. So, um, a very simple but uh, common move from the DMV is simply threading with your arms, and it's as simple as you know, from your hands, one hand grabs the elbow, and then that arm that's extended can literally weave through and weave back in the same motion if you want, back and forth, or in the same direction over and over again right so combining this technique with your very basic leg threads or your hips or elbows or knees or whatever what have you um, you can start to develop a lot of really cool ways to kind of constantly connect and loop your threads back and forth together so for example the one that we just went over from here, you can thread here, boom, thread here, but instead of just threading and pulling your hand back over this way, you can thread and thread as you go back one more time. So from here, it goes from this, thread, thread, to becoming a little bit more complicated and layered by simply doing an arm thread. So from here, thread, thread, down. So it just ends up the threads that you're already doing in the same motion and just adds that many more layers to it. So for example, one more time. From here, thread, boom, thread, thread one more time. Okay. And if you wanted to be technical, this creates an opening. The legs, arms, and the floor itself creates an opening. So from here, if you wanted to, you could thread your whole body through here and, and move your way to the floor if you wanted to. Okay? So you want to connect all that together then, you know, your threads can change levels, so if you connect all together, it just kind of like 
keeps stacking and layering with one another. Uh, and it just, you know, if you start to really develop a style around threads, it just gets even more layered and complex uh, to the point where, you know, you're, you're barely stepping anymore. It's just constant flow and motion. So from here, all right, so six step. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. Okay. So as I'm going through the whole time, my hand is still on the spool. As, as you can see right here. It's still on the ground. Okay. And then from here, if you want, you can just keep threading through. So you can go in and then go out as well. So it just, like I said, it, with, with threads, you can just kind of keep going and going and going nonstop and uh, build it as far as you want to build it. Some people are very good at this and develop a whole unique style of their own. Um, others, like myself, I like to blend more traditional East Coast, like New York steps with, uh, with like a much more modern twist on threads and floor movement. So I like to blend a little bit above. So one more time. So from six step, doing a regular six step. You know what I'm saying? So once you get adjusted to the flexibility and movements, you can start speeding up these combinations and really come up with some like incredible stuff, especially if you combine it with leg sweeps. So for example, the uh, the front leg sweep combination to the floor freeze that we went over. So this guy, from here, sliding through and coming to the floor freeze. You can connect these movements and connect your hands and feet or various different parts of your body to directly flow into threads. So same thing again, you can go slide in, and from here, as you do the back sweep, you can grab your foot and come to the floor freeze here. So instead of just your legs doing it on its own, you can attach a thread into it. Okay, so regular leg sweep to floor freeze versus connecting it into a thread. Okay, and then again, it doesn't have to end there. You can keep going with it, right? Uh, as you come through, you can thread it and place your foot on the ground. Right, hook on top, boom, thread both your legs around your arms. You see what I'm saying? So, there's a lot of different ways you can play around with this concept of doing threads. Uh, I'm kind of starting to go all over the place right now, but uh, really, the sky's the limit here. You can connect. Again, just even the smallest glimpse of like creating an opening using your own body in conjunction with the floor can potentially turn into a, a thread. So for example, what I just did right now from the squat, my left arm or my left hand grabs my left ankle. But then look, here's an opening, right? Right here. So you can move your knees around and thread through to the other side. And again, it connects from one ankle to the other. You know, it's, it's a fairly abstract concept while not being very abstract. So it makes sense, but then you can tweak it and play with the, the visuals of it to make it make sense or make it work to your benefit for your style of building footwork or whatever flow that you're, you're trying to develop. Okay, 
Um, so yeah, I mean, again, you can do a thread within a, within a thread. So you can do thread while still holding onto your foot, thread to groove the floor in your body, thread underneath, do a leg sweep, connect it to the other side, switch hands and feet, and then go to a hook. And then from a hook, what happens? You know, there, there's an opening here. So from a hook, if you wanted to, thread your hand through, right? You can do a figure four freeze here, like a plank, split, swing back around, grab your foot, and grab to another thread. Okay. While you're doing this thread now, you know, I'm just going to show different, just various different ways you can do threads. From here now, okay, I'm going to keep my hips seated to the ground. Leg sweep, not with my legs entirely, but sweep with just my thigh. So keeping in a figure four position. Anchor my right foot. And I can do a sweep here and do a thread out of that. There's just so many different combinations that you can achieve uh, using, um, which is why all this is so very important to learn if you really want to develop your understanding of breaking, footwork in general, um, your leg sweeps, your traditional steps, uh, little itty bitty bits of freezes that you throw in the middle of a uh, footwork. Uh, can come in handy too, your threads, and then uh, and then your shuffles. All of it can connect seam seamlessly uh, back and forth one after another. Uh, you know what I mean? Like real real quick, we'll we'll, we'll freestyle a little a little combination right now. So you can do for example, six step, we'll, we'll do like really basic stuff. So six step, leg sweep to a thread, hook, right? And then from hook, you can use this positioning to go into a knee shuffle. Step down, freeze, 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 step down, leg sweep, figure four from the thread, stomach roll, right, thread again, and then, you know, use that direction as your Threading and your foot goes behind the other one. Like sweep back into this position. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Um, you can, that's all just on the floor and your legs too. Like I said, there's options to use your upper body and your hands, which is like a very iconic style of threading in the DMV. Um, just simply, just grab your head and then you have an opening here. So now you can thread and pull your hand out of the thread. You see what I'm saying? Or you can do on your hip, you can thread through your hand, pull that hand. Now I'm grabbing my knee. From my knee, I can thread it out. And then from here, I can like Go to a little b-boy stance like this or grab this arm and grab my head and just keep going with threads An another basic thread uh just hand on hand right my shoes are a little funky my, my hands are falling apart but basically threads are just any opening and moving 
any other part of your body through that opening that you create. So um, definitely just get as creative as you want. Uh, don't get too carried away with the uh, with trying to be different. Think more so of I mean, if you can come up with invent a whole new crazy thread, by all means do so. But definitely try to uh, take the most common threads that are available already. And uh, the really fun part is coming up with your own combination of those basic threads and sweeps and steps and shuffles. So that's where the real fun comes in. It's not always necessarily about creating something completely new every time. That's basically almost impossible, but the point is like, you know, take something simple as this thread and connect it to something else that's really basic, but maybe it's a combination that no one else has thought of or not many other people do. And so, uh, you know, in my opinion, and it, you know, purely my opinion, but I think that's where the the true creativity comes from. But we all got two arms into like you know like if you if you do happen to develop like something completely brand new, that's spectacular. But um, as far as I'm concerned, like you know, we've, we've gone as far as we can go, almost, unless you're like super flexible and you can do some stuff that no, nobody else can. But you know the, the the true fun part to doing footwork, doing threads, doing shuffles, uh, doing steps, uh, doing sweeps, and all that is coming up with your own combination of moves that uh, hasn't been seen or is rarely seen before. That's that's the most most fun part about uh, breaking and and just doing footwork in general is that uh, to this day people are still coming up with new combinations of movements um, because it's you know there's almost a, a million different ways to combine these moves you know there's there's a million steps out there already as it is and then you know if you, if you think about developing combos with, with all these different movements and uh, you know, it's, it's almost infinite, you know, it's just, sometimes it just requires you to sit down and think about how you're going to combine these things. And so, uh, part of practice is having fun and dancing. Part of dancing is also, a uh, part of practicing this dance is also discipline, like drilling the same moves over and over again. But also a very large chunk of practicing is uh, sitting down and taking the time to really like think about what you're doing and brainstorming new ways to develop your own footwork or rather redevelop for, for a lot of people redeveloping your footwork. Um, you've all seen these moves before. But again, it's just everyone has their own unique way of comboing these moves and uh, creating their own pattern with it. So uh, yeah, just try to be as creative as you can be. Uh, but if not, it's fine. Just if you're fairly new to doing threads or doing or just breaking in general, um, take your time slowly developing uh, your basic movement. So. Practice your basic thread from here to this. Uh, people do it in freezes. You know, you can be in a handstand. Boom. Grab your other foot. Boom. Grab your foot again. Boom. Boom. You know, people come up with crazy combinations. Uh, threads are perfect for developing crazy head spin variations or back spins, shoulder spins, anything really. 90s. Uh, Threads 
can be done in almost any aspect of breaking uh, and can be comboed back and forth from doing a thread in full work and then from full work threading into power and then continuing that power move and threading yet again into a freeze. You know, there's this, like threading kind of gives you this, threading gives you this extra layer to add that much more complexity to uh, to your sets. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I, I just kind of went off on a tangent. Anywho, uh, <laughs> just uh, continue developing your, your basic footwork and your sweeps, shuffles, and your threads. Everything should come together. Uh, and, and yeah, just think about how certain moves end and how they begin. And you'll start to find ways to start to find ways to connect everything. You know I mean, like I showed you earlier with the leg sweep, as you're doing that one leg sweep forward and that this leg sweeps behind, it naturally can be connected with your hand straight into a thread. You know, um, even a hook, a six step hook. You can do a hook here and continue it back into a hook. Just think about how certain things uh, begin and end, uh, and sometimes even smack dab in the middle, how you can just cut it and move it into another move or connect it to another whole idea separately. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of uh, room for error, although there's really no wrong thing to do in breaking. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's just a lot of leeway in how you connect moves and develop your stuff. So if someone says you're doing something wrong there, you know, don't listen to them. Just keep doing these things. Eventually you will find better ways to connect moves and better ways to execute certain movements. But in the meantime, just, you know, just start picking at your own brain and trying to develop your own style, get used to the different various methods and techniques and try to connect everything all together. Um, but otherwise, uh, ooh, we only have five minutes left. So real quick, We'll do another light stretch and then uh, and then we'll be outie. All right, and then I'll just uh, before I completely log out, I'll I'll show you some basic threads again, just like some last minute stuff. So one more time, we'll do a stretch, and a split. We'll do a quick one. Uh, I'm moving my head back and forth, but you don't have to do that. Okay, so quick butterfly stretch. Always good to end your sessions in a stretch. All right, cracking my neck. Um, legs straight forward, okay. Back straight. Always wash your hands. You want to grab touching the bottom of my shoes. This is probably the right move. Um, right foot on your left leg. Make your figure four and try to Place your other foot on the ground and try to bring your legs no, as close to your butt as possible. All right, switch sides. Left leg over your right. Same thing. Try to bring that leg as close to, close to your uh, chest as possible. This stretches out the back of your thighs pretty well. All right. So yeah, just, you know, you can do, I'm just going to do a little freestyle, just like show you how you can connect different threads. So from here, legs, boom, throw it over, throw this one over, leg sweep here, boom, thread through my legs, 
split, switch, thread again, bring it down, holding on to the ankle, thread here, thread again through with the other knee, thread all the way back again, throw it over, and, and thread over here, boom, grab that foot, just possibilities are endless. And the more you get comfortable doing these various combinations, the more comfortable you will feel freestyling it. And the more comfortable you feel freestyling threads with your footwork and sweeps and kickouts and all that other stuff, uh, just in general, over time, uh, your, your footwork will just look insanely smooth, fluid, mad flowy. Um, especially if you start to get an idea and picture these movements in your head as you're doing them and know which moves are going to flow together the best. So practice everything all together, please. And, uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, develop your own flow.